Hey guys, how's it going? This is Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So I'm pretty excited about today's episode and the reason why is because I love design patterns. I show you the single tone design pattern from last episode. In this episode, I want to do things a little bit different and there's nothing wrong with doing single tones. I, I actually use them quite a bit, but there's a lot of instances where, where you need dependency injection. So I want to focus this episode on basically using a component called Zenjek, which is in the asset store. And I'm gonna show you how to get it set up and how we can use it in our games. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert the example that we did last time by creating a game manager and a line manager using a singleton pattern and actually get them injected into an object by using dependency injection. So let's do it. Okay, so here we are in Unity and I want you to click on the asset store. Then search for Zenjek dependency injection once you find that, you'll see a page like this. Then just click on import. I'm not gonna click on import because I already imported it into our project. So, and when it's completed, right click on the hierarchy, Zenjack, and let's create a scene context. We're gonna leave everything as it is. Then I'm gonna right click on the assets under the project, create, we're gonna create a new folder. This folder is gonna be called DI. Let's go into it. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a DI installer. So we're gonna click on create, Zenjack, and mono installer. It's gonna give you, it's gonna ask you for a name. We're just gonna call it default installer. Perfect. So now that you have that created, let's go back into the Zen context and click on add component and associate the default installer with the scene context. Then under installers, click on the plus symbol and click on the scene context. Perfect. The next thing that I want to do is I want you to double click on the default installer. And what, are, what we're gonna be doing in these installers, we're gonna be binding to all the instances that we want to inject into our code. And if you remember what we did with singletons, with singletons, we had to do something a little bit different. And I'm gonna just show you, so if you look at the light manager, in order for an instance of a light manager to get created, we had to call the instance and then it was gonna check, well, it was checking the instance was null. If it was null, we would get a light manager created. The same thing with the game manager. Anytime that we call this property instance, basically, if we never call it before, we would get an instance, otherwise, we would get the ins existing instance. So what I wanna do is, while you're on the game manager, I'm gonna actually get rid of this code and I'm gonna rename this star to be public star game manager state change. And I'm gonna basically replace the signature of the method with the log entry. And we're gonna say that it was called. And we don't need this light manager instance here, so the other thing that I want to do, I don't want to inherit from Mono Behavior. And we're actually going to create an interface, public interface, iGame Manager. And we're going to copy the signature of the method and then inherit Game Manager from iGame Manager. Perfect. So now let's do the same thing. Let's do something similar in our Light Manager. We're not gonna use the singleton implementation. And I'm gonna go create an interface. And normally the interfaces will have their own file for simplicity, simplicity purposes. I'm not gonna do that. And basically you'll end up with the iLine manager and the signature of the turn lights toggle. And we're gonna inherit from it this way. And everything looks fine. Okay, so now we have basically an interface and, a, and an implementation class and the same thing with the game manager. Now, how do we call it? How do we register that? 
So the way that you can do this is basically we can go back into our default installer and we're gonna be we're gonna be using what's called a container. And think of think of a container as a basically items that you're putting into a container. And then anytime you need an item out of the container, we can basically get it out by injecting that item into a method, into a constructor, or into a property. So I'll show you how that works. So if we call the container and we bind this container to say we want the light manager. And then when we ask for an iLight Manager, we want to convert that to a Light Manager. And we want this to be a single, basically a singleton. We are going to do the same thing with the iGame Manager, which is the interface. And we're going to get, we want a Game Manager out of it. And let me, you also have a few other options, so you can do as cache, which is another option. You can do a single and you can do a stringent. And a stringent is basically gonna give you a new instance every time. For performance purposes, right now we're just gonna use singletons. Okay, so now we, we're basically telling the system that we want to register a light manager and we also want to register a game manager. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to Unity and we're gonna create a new game object. In, the, in this game object, we're gonna call it test dependency injection. Injection. And we're gonna copy that name and I'm gonna basically create a new script, which is gonna, it's gonna have the exact same name. Perfect. So now let's double click on it. Perfect. And I don't need the update method, so I'm gonna get rid of the update method. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go back into the documentation and I'm gonna go back into the hello world and just show you how how the hello world example works. It's basically similar to what we did. We're installing the bindings and we are registering to these different types. So for our injection, I was, I was telling you how you could inject to basically a constructor. In this case, foo is basically asking for ibar. So when foo is created, an instance of type ibar will be injected. You can do that too in the fields. You can do it in the properties. We're actually gonna do it in a method. And we're gonna copy and paste that code. And I'm gonna do using sandject. And I'm actually gonna call this setup. And whenever whenever setup is called, I want to get a iLight manager, a light manager, and I also want an iGame manager and my game manager. And the other thing that I want to do is I want to create two private properties of that same type. Manager, and I'm gonna do the same thing with the game manager. Game manager, and we're gonna delete this. We're gonna say this light manager equal to the light manager that we're injecting. This is the game manager, it's gonna be equal to the game manager that we're injecting. So you could technically have a, a big list of in injected instances. So say that we wanted to have a I input manager, we could actually inject that if we if we wanted to create that. So okay, perfect. So the next thing that I want to do is if you go back to the game manager, we had a method called game manager state change. I want to make sure that that's working. That's why I kept it so I kept it so simple. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say on the star, I want to, we actually don't need to say this, we can just say game manager. So what's gonna happen is we actually don't need to call this method explicitly. What Saint Jake is actually gonna call it because it sees the attribute and it's gonna inject an iLight manager type and an iGame manager type. 
So if we go back into Unity, and I'm going to actually comment out these two game objects, or disable those two game objects, and I'm going to hit play. And we're going to go ahead and look at our console. And we can see the game manager state change was called. So we didn't have to have a singleton created explicitly with these two game objects. We did it all through dependency injection. So if we go back through, we never had to call the setup. It all happened automatically. And then on a start, we already had a game manager created. And then we call the game manager state change. So, so what I want to do is I want to I want to be able to call from the game manager. I want to be able to basically turn the lights off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this code and I'm going to go back into the game manager. Because if you remember, we had a call above the debug entry that was basically toggling the lights. So we're going to do something similar. We are going to be using Senject here. And in this case, I really don't need an instance of myself. So I only need the light manager. So I'm going to get rid of the game manager. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to see right here, I'm going, I'm going to turn the lights off. So this is great because we didn't have to call, we didn't have to worry about the life cycle of light manager. All we had to do was to register basically the objects that we needed through the bindings. So if we go back into Unity and we hit play, if everything works, the lights should tur be turned off. And it looks like everything works. And that's basically everything that I wanted to cover. Let me just give you a quick recap of everything that we did. We went through and imported Senjek into our project. And then the next thing that we did was we created an installer and we bound all of our interfaces with our concrete classes as singletons. Then we went through and removed the singleton pattern that we created from a previous episode on both the game manager and the light manager. And we implemented a setup method that was used to inject our instances for light manager and game manager. And lastly, we tested our line manager toggle and everything was working. So thank you again, guys. If you have any questions, let me know through the comments. I'm pretty passionate about this subject. And don't forget to share. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again, guys.